All right, it seems we, we are live. So welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Ubuntu Online Summit. Um, like every six months, we join to celebrate the new, a new release of Ubuntu and to uh, participate in a series of Hangouts uh, with live content, with tutorials, discussions, um, demos, and everything um, around, around Ubuntu. I'm joined today by uh, Mark Shepherdworth, um, founder of Canonical and Ubuntu, who will be doing the opening keynote. But before, um, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, US, how to participate, and essentially um, what you should expect from uh, from taking part at the at the event. So let me just um, pull some slides first and share my screen. All right, then. So uh, you should all see a shiny, very orangey um, slide, I hope. Um, you want online summit. Um, so again, welcome to the summit. It's going to be three days of uh, diverse content, um, lots of uh, free and, uh, and live sessions where you can participate easily at summit.com. The summit is about celebrating. We've just uh, re uh, released our 23rd release, uh, one, the one that marks the 11th anniversary of uh, our Ubuntu. And uh, as we always say, it's our best release uh, so far. Um, so UAS is a place to um, to learn what you can do with uh, with uh, Wirewolf, um, to learn what uh, how you can use the developer tools, how you can contribute to the um, to the release. Um, and to how to shape the plans for the next for the next release, which takes me to the road to 1604. 1604 is going to be our next LTS, um, long-term release support um, distribution. And um, what you'll hear at, U at US will be two um, two recurring themes um, that will essentially shape um, the road to 1604 and beyond. Um, Ubuntu is everywhere. Ubuntu is uh, ubiquitous. You can find it on clouds, on servers, on phones, on laptops, uh, and on, uh, on all kinds of devices, essentially. Um, Ubuntu is everywhere, not just uh, in terms of um, it being installable on, on any of these, uh, these devices, but also um, because we're working on, uh, on convergence. When we talk about convergence, we talk about um, essentially being able to run the same operating system you all know and love with the same UX and with the same features that uh, that you expect on a desktop on uh, on your personal devices, such as handhelds um, and tablets, for example. So you'll hear about um, Pocket Desktop uh, in these three days. You'll hear about Ubuntu running um, on your phone, and essentially the phone being your, your desktop. You'll hear about... Um, Convergence, 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 essentially. Um, so if you're interested in these particular topics, be, uh, be sure to, uh, to check out um, the sessions on the convergence track and on the uh, on the core track, of which I'm going to talk about in a minute. The online summit is a set of, um, of sessions. You can join, join online on summit.ubuntu.com. Um, they are free. You can register. Um, and you can then participate in these uh, in these hangouts either as, as a spectator or joining in um, to collaborate. We've got a series of topics which run along a series of tracks. Uh, essentially, tracks group uh, all of these streams of contents uh, into into one particular theme. So we've got the Open Scope develop, development track where you will find sessions about um, the SDK, writing apps for Ubuntu. Um, Essentially, um, writing your, your converged apps as well. So there's there's, there's going to be a bit of um, of overlap as well with convergence and uh, and app in scope development as well. Then cloud, you'll see a lot of content about containers, about Juju, about OpenStack, about DevOps, anything that you need to know about running Ubuntu on uh, on cloud uh, and servers as well. The core track is perhaps one of our most uh, new and shiny uh, shiny ones. This is all about Snappy. Snappy is the new um, rendition of Ubuntu that has a uh, lean and mean um, core uh, set of features that you can that you can install with uh, the bare essentials to run Ubuntu, which you can then um, 
grow uh, in functionality with uh, with applications. This is the version of Ubuntu that that can run on clouds, cloud, but also it can run on uh, Internet of Things and uh, and devices. Then on the convergence track, um, it's all about um, the road to convergence. Um, you'll see a preview of convergence, and you have actually, um, if you've been following the Ubuntu channels, you've already seen uh, all of the pictures um, that the community started to post about uh, the first convergence features landing. So this is all about running Ubuntu as a desktop from your phone, uh, about developing UIs for applications that run um, on uh, multiple form factors and devices, and so on. And then the next track that we've got is um, community track. This is all about advocacy. This is about governance. This is about uh, growing the community in general. This is not just related to one particular area of the community uh, or just about development. It's um, it's all all around community. It's all around contributing to um, to Ubuntu and making sure that um, that there is space for um, for everyone to to join and um, and to discuss how to um, better participate in Ubuntu. And then finally, on the show and tell track, we've got uh, all of our exciting demos, Q and A's, um, and essentially things that might break or might not break, but lots of exciting stuff uh, being shown by um, by the experts on on each field. So be sure to um, be sure to check out um, this one in particular because it's been one of our most popular mm -hmm. so far. Then finally, um, remember to go to summit.ubuntu.com to um, to see all of the all of the sessions, and there you can participate. You can, you can, sorry, there you can um, create your own schedule, see what's going on each day, and essentially prepare um, the sessions you want to join um, every day. And then just to wrap up, um, a reminder: if you want online summit is uh, is your event. You can participate for free, but um, it's not just about um, being there as a spectator. It's about um, making um, making it want to happen. It's about participating. It's about making sure that uh, if there's a topic where you're interested, uh, if you'd like a um, particular area of Ubuntu where you think you can make a difference, uh, to go in one particular direction is this about joining sessions. Um, and this is about proposing um, new directions, proposing uh, new proposals, new, um, new initiatives, and uh, essentially Making uh, making this uh, happen. So um, remember to register in Summit on uh, summit.ubuntu.com. There you can subscribe to the, the sessions you are interested in, and you can build your own schedule. If you are participating in one session uh, or if you are running one session, remember to promote it on um, on the social media, share news about it, and make sure that uh, if you need someone to join the session, you contact them in, in advance to be there um, and be part of the session. And then finally, um, if you are at the session, if you're watching, and if you think you can make a contribution, you can participate on IRC, you can jump into the Hangout. These are all live, um, live streams where um, you can join ad hoc. Um, so I would encourage everyone who wants to, um, to essentially Make this happen, then to to join one of uh, one of these hangouts, and then that's pretty much it in terms of uh, Ubuntu Online Summit in a nutshell. Um, I think what I'll do now is I'll leave the stage um, to Mark Shuttleworth, our um, founder um, from both uh, Ubuntu Project and uh, and Canonical, um, who's um, there today from Prague, and then he'll share. Um, well, some news and uh, and answer the questions of the community later on. So enjoy the summit and thank you. I think maybe we've lost Mark. All right, let me just. Thank you. All right. So it seems that um, since Mark is experiencing some um, some technical difficulties, 
So while he's um, join, or trying to join again, um, he's coming back in a minute, just saying. All right, so while, uh, while he's joining in, um, if you've got any questions uh, after Mark's keynote or during Mark's keynote, remember to post them on IRC. That's on uh, on the Ubuntu dash US dash on Freenode. And um, we'll essentially uh, take them first come, um, first serve. All right, welcome back, um, Mark. Hello, sorry about that. I'm, uh, I'm once again dialing in from a fun part of the world. I'm in Prague this week, and uh, so I, I may not have the bandwidth that I usually have, but I hope that uh, we can get everything we need done. Can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you fine. All right, I'm uh, just trying to bring up a presentation, and then we will dive off, dive in. Dive on. Um, so first, let me echo some of the points that David made. Um, this is an incredibly important part of the community process by which we map out and and converge on goals for our release. And we do it this way because it means that everybody can participate, everybody in the world can participate, they can participate in the pieces that um, they really care about, um, and perhaps most importantly there's then a public record of everything that was said, all the commitments that were made, all the decisions that were made and how they came to be um, that anybody can watch at any time. So I think it's an incredibly transparent way for us to build consensus on what Ubuntu is going to be about in the next six months. Um, and this isn't just any six months for us. This is an LTS release. So I think we're ready to go here. Easiest is going to be just to do that and that. David, do you have do you have the opening slide there? Yeah, we can see the slide. Yeah. All right, yeah. great. So this, of course, isn't just any release for us. This is 1604 LTS. And um, Ubuntu really pioneered the idea of declaring in advance on a deadline that we were going to make a long-term supported release. Um, it's great, I think, that that idea has been picked up broadly across um, not just the, the um, open source ecosystem, but also the, the um, uh, proprietary ecosystem as the world has moved to much faster cadences of software delivery and development it's really important occasionally to pause pull all of that together and give your users something that they can bank on for the next extended period um, when we look at data for example on the cloud as to how many releases um, are in use in uh, places like AWS or the Google um, cloud it is incredibly clear um, that the LTS means something to our users. They really trust it. They count on it. It is the default platform. 1404 LTS is today the default platform for innovation, not just on the cloud, but in robotics and in any number of other important areas um, that free software is the foundation for, for innovation. So this next release, 1604 LTS, I think is going to be just as important as 1404 was. I think it's going to be a, a huge part of the innovation that happens in the next four years um, online. So we all have an interest in making it awesome. Um, and to do that, uh, in a sense, um, it helps to be prepared. It helps for us to have been doing over the last couple of releases all of the ice breaking to, to set ourselves up for a great LTS. And I believe we have done that. Um, for us on the in personal computing, clearly the story is one about convergence. Um, it is very reassuring and gratifying to see convergence emerging across all of um, the, the, the industry as a common theme. Um, these, these devices, these personal, these pocket devices that we've been carrying around are increasingly a substitute for full-scale personal computing. 
And um, our vision for the last four years has been that those pocket devices become your entry point to every kind of personal computing. Uh, and it's really important for us now to bring that vision home. Um, I saw one of the most enthusiastic and excited posts um, uh, on social media recently um, uh, from this chap who spent a day playing with a phone that is a PC. And this is a future that is ready to be born and it's ready to be born uh, as free software on, on Ubuntu. So um, I, I, I couldn't be more excited um, at the preparatory work that's been done at how that work has come together and how our design thinking has led us to this very fluid, very integrated, very coherent story for convergence. Um, and I think we're very privileged to be working with a, an extraordinary community that has taken this idea to heart. Um, fantastic apps emerging, uh, fantastic innovation continuing to emerge. Um, this is a fun place to be and it's a fun time to be in this place. It is um, uh, I think going to be a lot of fun for people to take phone apps and make them work across tablets and across uh, the PC um, and all of the raw materials, all of the tools, all of the design think thinking now is in place to support you um, if that's uh, an adventure that you want to be um, part of in the next six months. So to the communities who are leading that work, thank you, you're doing amazing stuff and um, I think you're going to set the bar for free software in personal computing. And I think that's something really to be proud of, something to celebrate and something to participate in. Um, this is the new wave of personal computing. I don't think it will stop with phones, tablets and PCs, but it's really important for us to put free software in the middle of that in the middle of that wave. You know, people innovate with the tools that they have around them and increasingly those are going to be um, PCs that are expressed as you know, you know tiny devices that live around your body somehow. Uh, to me, it's really important that we we put free software um, uh, in play right at the cutting edge of that story. Um, there will be many sessions this week on that. I'm not going to try and cover everything that's that's going to be done there, but I feel like that dam is about to burst in our favor. Right? We've 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 done all the preparatory work. I think. The results now are super credible, super clear, um, and I'm very proud to have been part of that process and delighted with the teams that are um, taking ownership of that and, uh, and running with it. Um, uh, we're also seeing innovation in a whole new category of computing, right? Traditionally, there's been servers and desktops. We now call it cloud and personal computing. Um, servers are getting reinvented as cloud, personal computing is getting reinvent, reinvented around convergence. Um, but there's also this new category of computing which is things. And things are kind of interesting because they are neither personal nor centralized. So you, if you imagine a data center, um, it's very impersonal, right? It's not a, it's not a social place to be. Um, none of those machines specifically belong to anybody. They kind of belong to the cloud. Um, but there's a lot of professional attention on that data center to make sure that those servers are doing what they should be doing. And, and similarly, if you imagine personal computing, um, it's very personal, right? For pretty much any personal device, you can associate that with a person uh, or at least a family and say, well, that's the that's the person who's responsible for making decisions about that device. But when we talk about the Internet of Things, um, we have neither a very strong personal story nor a very strong kind of centralized, consolidated, professional story, right? Um, so we have all of these things emerging around us that are smart, that have software, that are um, vulnerable to security flaws just like any software is, but where it's much more difficult to know exactly who's responsible for fixing anything and how they're going to do that and, and how they're going to do that professionally. So for us that's an entirely new domain um, for free software and I'm super excited about how we are now making it possible for people to innovate in that space on top of Ubuntu as they, as they generally do innovate. Um, but also to do it in such a way that when we have millions of those things out in the world, it will be secure. It will be secure by default in a way that it wouldn't be if we just 
did Ubuntu there the way we've done Ubuntu everywhere else. Um, so that, of course, is the world of Snappy, um, Ubuntu Core, Snaps, Snapcraft, um, a whole new world, a whole new kind of set of tools and, uh, and language, but of course all built around exactly the same kernels, exactly the same libraries, exactly the same updates, exactly the same free software that makes up Ubuntu today. Um, just this week, uh, the world's biggest manufacturer of um, drones, like this, like this quadcopter, um, released a control system, an open maker-friendly control system called the Manifold, which is what I'm showing here. And, and that control system is runs Ubuntu. It's completely open. You can, you can do everything that you would imagine doing with a little Ubuntu server. You can write software that will fly around and do stuff, and that's incredibly cool. Um, uh, so I'm very proud to be underwriting, supporting our work there. I think the teams involved, again, have done something incredible with Snappy and with Ubuntu Core. Um, and for those of you who are diving into it, I think you're going to find it's an easy way to make brilliant things, right? Think of Ubuntu Core as like Ubuntu firmware, right? It's not Ubuntu server the way you're used to it, but it's much more crisp, much more structured, much more suitable for um, rapid updates of distributed systems. Um, um, I've never seen us do anything that took off as quickly as Snappy, right? It's, it seems like everywhere in the world there are people who are just desperate to figure out how they can have devices in the field that get transactional updates, and Snappy does all of that. Now, six months ago, um, at the start of 15.10, I, 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 I talked through this, but I'd like to do it again, right? I want to show you the difference between classic Ubuntu and snappy Ubuntu. So in classic Ubuntu, you have a, a big file system, and that file system is, is read-write, right? And every time you app get a package, that package can write anywhere in the file system. It can write to slash, etc. It can write to um, var, lib, anything. Um, and essentially, it... it it does whatever it needs to do to integrate that package into the existing system. And that's really cool. It's, it's a good way to kind of get a bunch of software together in one system. But it causes these overlaps. It causes these problems where um, after a while we need an expert or a management system to tease apart all the changes on the file system and deal with things like upgrades. So that's why we made Snappy Ubuntu. Now, with Snappy Ubuntu, we separate all the pieces. So we have a giant blob, which is the OS snap, and we have a separate snap for the kernel, and we keep those things completely separate, right? We essentially keep those things read-only, so that OS snap can't be tampered with, right? You can check a digital signature on that and, and see if anybody has modified any bits in it, which is hugely important in a world where it turns out there's a lot of sneaky stuff going on behind the scenes with, with um, um, uh, hacking and um, surveillance of the systems that we all count on. So we have these um, uh, signed blobs effectively which allow us to get transactional updates of the kernel and transactional updates of the OS. Each of those has some writable space and then we add apps as an, an additional collection of those same signed blobs and each of them get their own writable area. Because we keep those things completely separate we can update them much more easily because we don't have to, we don't have to figure out the interlock between these different parts. Each of these parts can only write to the space that is that is assigned to it. So this is what a snappy Ubuntu system looks like. The file system essentially is built in a completely different way, even though the binaries and the libraries are exactly the same as the stuff that you're familiar with. So Snapcraft is a tool to help you build snaps. Um, it's kind of like apt-get for source code on GitHub, uh, and it's a lot of fun, right? What we've noticed is that the world of free software development is now moving much faster than the traditional packaging process can accommodate. And so, in a weird kind of way, um, we needed a new way to enable people to share stuff um, uh, that's much faster than traditional packing. And that's what snaps really are. Snapcraft is the new tool to help you build those. It's a packaging tool, effectively. Um, it makes it much easier to assemble a snap out of a bunch of reusable parts, which are essentially like source code build recipes. It reuses all the existing upstream build systems, so um, auto tools and 
um, the existing packaging systems for things like Python uh, packages, Py PyPy, um, and um, the equivalent things for Node.js or Ruby, for example, are all supported um, by Snapcraft. So it's really fun, really easy to make snaps, really easy to share essentially recipes for how you build um, the very latest source code into a snap um, to distribute to any snappy system. Um, these are the kinds of devices that we see people making, smart TVs, um, routers, gateways. Um, and in the last six months, we've seen a big, uh, a big surge in the number of people building snappy systems, in particular um, Wi-Fi networking equipment and switching networking equipment. We're seeing people using snappy um, in those environments. Uh, robots, all of the open source robots um, seem to be running Ubuntu and Snappy uh, makes it very easy for people to make smart robots that, um, that enable essentially apps to be installed uh, and to do that all safely and securely and, uh, and reliably. And of course drones like, um, like that DJI um, a maker friendly drone. Um, there's lots of cool stuff happening. If you're interested in any of those areas, then Snappy is a, a very cool thing to check out, and I would encourage you to enjoy it uh, and, and to join and enjoy the sessions this week um, on Snappy, Snapcraft, um, and those uh, very cool Internet of Toys, Internet of Things um, type initiatives. Um, from there, I'd like to take us to the cloud. Um, uh, we learned last week at, at the OpenStack Summit on, uh, in, in Tokyo that 65% of the large OpenStack deployments, clouds, uh, are on Ubuntu. Uh, and that's because we've taken a very open, very collaborative approach to the packaging of OpenStack on Ubuntu, enabling people to build those clouds very quickly and very easily. You might have seen a new package landing in, um, uh, in Wiley, which is a, uh, uh, an OpenStack installer, making it really easy for people to deploy OpenStack, which is a complicated, big, big piece of software that's essentially giving you a nice, clean wizard to walk through and deploy um, OpenStack um, on a single machine or on 500 machines. Um, and from there, essentially, you can imagine us broadening to look at um, all of the big distributed software that is kind of taking over the cloud, uh, by which I mean big data, things like Hadoop and Spark and machine learning tools, um, but also um, the new container systems like Mesos and Flocker and uh, Project Orca from Docker. Um, these are all um, rich, complicated, fast-moving, um, large-scale pieces of software, and Juju really makes it easy for people to work with those in the same way that um, Apt makes it easy to work with a single machine. Juju makes it really easy to work with clusters of machines on the cloud or uh, or physical machines. Um, so this is uh, this is Hadoop with Hive um, uh, using Juju. This is a, a Docker deployment. Um, with etcd and, and flannel, this is OpenStack itself modeled in Juju, right? So um, Ubuntu has always been about trying to take the most interesting and complex stuff and make it really easy so that lots of people can innovate around it. If we make the complex stuff easy, then the next wave um, of, of, of innovation comes much faster. And Juju is really our way of bringing that Ubuntu Zen to complex distributed systems. So there'll be a bunch of sessions on charming, how you write charms of uh, software so that they can be spun up at scale uh, like all of the software that I'm showing you here. Um, this is Kubernetes, the Google-led um, container orchestration and management system, Docker container orchestration and management system. Charming just got a whole lot more fun um, because we, we've, we've built some tools that enable you to reuse other people's charm components essentially. So if you're writing a charm that just needs to plug into some standard parts, then it gets a lot easier. You don't have to write all this code yourself. This is what a charm looks like. But you can essentially just use um, standard templates and hook into standard events um, in any language to make um, your your charm. So um, join the sessions. Look at look at the stuff around interface stubs uh, and standard charm layers. Um, charming got a whole lot easier, and it's it's a bunch of fun. Um, 
Uh, we've also done some work to integrate the world of Docker with the, with the world of Charms. Docker is very popular as a way to kind of ship a binary, but it's kind of hard to make that binary easily integratable into, a, into other people's worlds. So if you wrap a Charm around a Docker image, it gets much more responsive, much more useful, much easier for people to deploy on a bunch of different clouds without having to think about what you know everything that's going on inside that deployment. Um, and so we call that payload management. Docker is one of the kinds of payloads that Charms can use alongside the KVM instance, instances and so on. We found that that really helps people who are charming stuff which um, is either available as a, as a virtual machine or available as, um, as a Docker image. Um, a huge step forward for us in the Juju world was uh, came in, in the latest version of Juju 125 where Charms got the ability to talk about the network and storage as first class things. So your Charm can now say, look, I've got a bunch of different things that I want to expose in different parts of the network or I, I, can, I, I can use several different classes of storage to optimize both the economics and the performance of um, uh, of the app that's being deployed on the cloud. So for people who are doing really complex things which, which need to, to, to be across multiple kind of zones in the network um, or where you've got um, uh, applications that could use different classes of storage in the cloud, fast storage, slow storage, cheap storage, expensive storage, um, f you know, and tune things to use the right kind of storage for the right purpose, um, Charming just got a whole lot more fun and a lot more useful. Um, and lastly, we've um, we've made it really easy now for Charms to tell you what's going on, to signal um, what they're doing, what they're waiting for, um, which makes the whole thing much much more usable. If you're deploying a big complex thing, you can now see exactly what's going across all of that complexity, and it's, it it just makes working with big distributed systems really quite fun. Uh, for me, it's been a lot of fun to see people who've been struggling with OpenStack or struggling with big data suddenly realize that actually it can be super easy. It reminds me a lot of the early days of Ubuntu where you know Linux is hard turns into turns into you know wow actually Linux can be for human beings right so now we're trying to say look there's these big distributed systems they can also be for human beings and we can share and collaborate and 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 um, um, democratize effectively that complexity so that you don't have to be a big organization to work with amazing stuff like machine learning. Okay, um, switching tack, you, you'll see some sessions this week about something called LexD. Now LexD is a pure container hypervisor, so it is in, in a very real sense the world's fastest hypervisor. For those of you who are working with lots of machines, lots of systems, um, Linux on servers, Linux at scale, um, LexD is um, like KVM but much, much lighter, much, much faster. Um, it is not yet something that we would recommend for a public cloud, but for private clouds, LexD is pretty amazing. Um, I, it's a lot of fun to be able to sit with your laptop and spin up 50 machines just on your laptop uh, with CentOS and Debian and Ubuntu and Red Hat and SUSE all kind of you know doing whatever you want in them. It's, it, it makes playing with Linux a lot of fun, especially if you're coming from a, a server background and you're interested in distributed systems. Um, making it easy for developers to, to work on distributed systems is a key goal for us. Um, the easier we can make it for developers to invent, the faster they'll invent amazing things. And I think LexD is going to be a key part of that. I would encourage you to um, dive in and play with it. Um, LexD is now available um, in the various backports repositories and in Wiley and of course in uh, in Xenial in 1604 as well as a as a 2.0 beta one. Um, uh, sticking with the server story, for those of you who are doing Ubuntu at scale, and Ubuntu is now the platform of choice for people who are doing Linux at scale, um, we have, uh, we're, we're going to include MAS 2.0 in Ubuntu 1604. And for those of you who've been following MAS, I hope you'll agree it's become an incredible tool, right? You can do, through the web, managing racks of servers, you can do network bonding, you can do RAID of the disks, you can set up everything exactly the way you want it, and then you can deploy stuff in this totally automated way. It's amazing magic. It's being used in some amazing places, right, to do very large, um, very cool deployments uh, underneath big data, underneath clouds, underneath machine learning, underneath Windows, underneath RHEL, underneath SUSE, underneath Debian, underneath Ubuntu. 
and um, and uh, I hope that you'll 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 find it a lot of fun. Um, it is also pretty cool to run at home. You know, if you just have a, if you have a network and you want to have a, a DNS server, you can use Maz and it and it gives you a nice. DNS server GUI effectively for all the stuff at, at, at home. Um, and if you want to do quick deploys, quick installs of server type stuff, then it's a great way to do it. So if you have a little Intel Nook um, and you want to use that for testing server stuff, then Maz is, is pretty cool. So it is going to be a great week, um, and I think it's going to be an amazing release. You know, uh, it, it feels like a long time since 1404. It's only been 18 months. But uh, a huge amount has gotten done. I've just touched the surface and provided, and uh, I hope a useful overview of um, of all of that. Um, um, this is the cycle where we bring all of that cool stuff together to make it a release that people will use for uh, you know for many years. Um, if you have things that you want to integrate in, this is the week to climb in. If you have ideas for how we make it awesome, this is the week to climb in. Um, please don't hesitate to speak up. Right, it is um, um, it is much easier to get ideas in now in the cycle than it is the week before release. So um, so so have at it, have fun, and um, thank you to all of the organizers and the session moderators and the leaders of the various of the various areas. I also want to say thank you to our uh, community council. We have, I think, we've had the best communi community council we've ever had. You know, this is a this is a team that cares deeply about all aspects of Ubuntu and balancing the many conflicting interests in essentially the world's biggest collaborative project. Um, and uh, they've done an incredible job. Uh, in particular, I want to celebrate that this team um, stayed focused on helping teams be productive and collaborate and get what they wanted to get done um, at a time when you know they were they were in the middle of a lot of um, sledging and and uh, and and tension. Um, uh, at the end of the day, I think we come together because we want to get stuff done. And if you're successful, you attract people who have other agendas as well. And we shouldn't stress about that, right? It's important for us to help the people who constructively engage here get as much done as they possibly can, possibly want to. People build amazing stuff on on Ubuntu, uh, derivatives, flavors, um, cool projects. Even some of our biggest critics use Ubuntu for the stuff that they care most about, and I love that, right? I think I think that's that's part of what makes Ubuntu special. Uh, and, and we couldn't do that without um, an independent and um, caring community council. Um, to those guys who've, uh, who've, who've led the community, who've been the face of the community in Ubuntu, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm delighted that we've had um, superb nominations um, for the next uh, uh, round of uh, elections to the community council, and we will publish a um, shortlist of candidates um, for everybody to to step up um, and uh, and select your community council for the the period going forward. Um, so thank you to the outgoing community council. Thank you very much to those who are stepping up to uh, to, to to serve on that very important body um, going forward. And um, thank you to all of you for uh, for making this um, an awesome online summit and. Um, a great release. So it is the Xenial Xerus. Uh, Xenial is like genial with a whole lot more X. Um, Xenial is a lovely word um, expressing friendship, expressing hospitality, expressing um, uh, you know an inviting household, a place that everybody wants to come together, have fun, and get stuff done. So um, kind of delighted that things came together that, uh, that that we could use it as the code word for uh, 1604. LTS. Um, uh, I'm super excited. I hope um, you are all um, uh, super excited. It is going to be an amazing release. You know, if I look at the groundwork that's gone into it, um, if I look at how well things have come together um, broadly in the kernel community, they're, they're interested in, in an LTS release that is perfectly timed for, for Xenial. So I, I think um, it's going to be a release you know, to remember something that will take Ubuntu to whole new audiences through convergence, through LexD, through Juju, uh, through Snappy. Um, I think you and your friends and your and your uh, um, colleagues are going to build incredible things on it. So let's make sure we build it really well. Right.
David, I'm sure we have time for questions, and I'd, I'd love to take some. And um... Yes, we do. So um, folks have been really uh, excited during the keynote, and we've got a series of questions already lined up. So I'm just going to pick uh, some of them from the list. Um, we've got about uh, 20 minutes. I know that some of you have asked multiple questions. In order to use um, the opportunity to everyone to ask, I might just um, pick um, like from different questions from different persons. In any case, um, first question is from Rich Wing. Uh, and I'm going to summarize it a bit. It's an extremely long question. Uh, it goes like, looking back at uh, 2013's Talman video, where Ubuntu was referred to as uh, spyware by uh, Richard Stallman, simply because you have to turn off the shopping lens option in the settings. Um, my question is, what, uh, Mark, what do you think about, uh, about that? And what do you feel about um, RMS's views? in general concerning Ubuntu? Well, of, of course I love Richard, right? I mean, he, he sort of, um, he's sort of amazing. Um, he's also sort of cranky, and, and I'm pretty sure that none of us would agree with him on everything, right? And so, so uh, I'm, not, I'm not at all offended that he would express his views strongly and clearly. Um, I'm also not at all offended that we, we tried that avenue to kind of connect people to what they do. You know, at the end of the day, Personal computing is about connecting you to the world, and it's got to be useful, uh, and we've got to think about what will make Ubuntu useful. Um, that is a changing story, right? Like the way we use personal computing is different today than it was 11 years ago when we when we created Ubuntu, right, or when we first released Ubuntu. Um, we're not going to get it right every time, like we we just aren't. Um, but you, you've got to be bold, and you've got to take risks, and you've got to essentially, you know, explore territory that that other people haven't explored yet. Otherwise, you, you're kind of consigned to an also rand, or you're consigned to following following others, right? Um, uh, Ubuntu is a place where we do take some risks, right? Where we are adventurous, and usually we get it absolutely right. You know, convergence. Um, was a, you know was something nobody believed in, and yet now suddenly everybody's doing it, and we kind of built that for free software, right? We 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 couldn't put free software at the front if we weren't willing to take risks and occasionally be wrong. Um, I think the term spyware was totally prejudicial and completely uncalled for, and you know uh, deliberately you know uh, clickbait, controversial, right? But that's Richard. I think um, our execution of the idea wasn't great, and so you know we 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 missed on that. Uh, there are other cases like that. You know, I think when we introduced Unity Seven, um, we moved it to the default too fast, and that's okay. We learn the stuff, right? Um, it doesn't bug me at all that we've learned things along the way. Um, it would bug me if we were kind of afraid to ever be controversial, because then we would never do anything interesting. Right, everything. The Eiffel Tower was controversial, right, and and now it's an icon. So, um, um, thank you for the question. Uh, thank you, Richard, for speaking your mind. Don't ever give up. Um, I also hope that nobody at the Ubuntu Online Summit is going to be afraid to grab hold of the future and build it, even if it might be a little controversial, right? All right. Next question is um, coming from. Um, are there any news on whether WhatsApp will arrive to the Ubuntu phone or not? Ah, um, I can't make a prediction in that regard. Um, uh, it might happen. There's there's good reasons why it would happen, and there's also reasons why it might not happen. Um, I think we will likely get some interesting apps um, on the phone, especially if we tell the convergence story well. Um, I think we will certainly be able to tell a better story about security and connectivity and convergence than anybody else in the world, um, and that's enough. Um, for me, enabling developers to have a highly secure device that has the best of free software in their pocket and can be a full PC experience, let them develop and do other amazing things, um, that's a pretty awesome goal, and I'm willing to, I'm willing to um, kind of um, be part of that just for that. Right. Um, I also think that um, with Snappy, we are going to be the default operating system for huge classes of devices, really important devices, robots, cars, um, airplanes, drones, 
um, switches, routers, stuff that runs the internet and runs um, um, really important infrastructure for you personally, right, at home, at the office. Um, and, uh, and that's the same app ecosystem that we have for the phone, right? It's going to be one blurred, one sort of coherent app ecosystem. So I think there's going to be a ton of innovation there. I think uh, we should dive in and see what we can create. All right, and tying in with the topic, uh, OMG Cat is asking, are there any plans for an Ubuntu uh, home router? Uh, it's a super cool idea, and obviously with Snappy, you could do an Ubuntu home router. I think it'd be pretty cool to try and make a snap of OpenWRT, right? Um, you could make you could make the code of OpenWRT a lot more maintainable if it was a snap, because you'd be able to reuse a lot of the the, the, the core platform stuff from Ubuntu. Uh, you'd be able to use uh, many more kernels, many more devices, support many more devices much more easily. Um, and, and the WRT guys could focus on the stuff that's really important for them, which is um, that network management experience. Um, so I'd super encourage someone to, to have a go at that. It would be fun for me to install um, Snappy on a, on a home router, and I guess there would be a bunch of other people who feel the same way. All right, Nathan Haynes, uh, Nathan, Nathan Haynes is asking, um, are you happy with the pace of Ubuntu phone hardware development worldwide? Um, well, to me, it's kind of amazing that re you know real manufacturers keep stepping up and saying, can we put can we put Ubuntu on this on this new device of ours? And we do you know constantly see people coming forward and saying, let's tell you about our roadmap and let's find a place for Ubuntu. Um, I think it's important that we carefully shape the emergence of Ubuntu so that it goes to people who are going to love it and, and contribute to it and be part of their ecosystem. Um, I think it would be a mistake for us to try to go too fast because um, if we put it in the hands of people who don't care about Ubuntu and don't want to be part of it, right now I think they'd be disappointed and then we'd be disappointed and the whole thing would be a mess. But I think that, that the, the steady growth of that is, is clear. I think the convergence story is a big step forward for us. Um, I think having devices that really tell that convergence story is the next big step. Um, and so, you know, that's a real focus for the team for 1604 to be able to show uh, a, a, a phone in your pocket which can give you a PC experience. Um, and uh, I think we're going to be doing it just as soon as some of the biggest companies in the world. All right, sorry, I was busy um, picking the questions from our audience. Um, Next question from Lucas uh, Z. Ubuntu Convergence, Mir slash Waylands containers, is that for Ubuntu 16.04 or later? Um, there will be convergence in Ubuntu 16.04. In other words, they, you will be able to build a um, phone that is also a PC with the versions of Unity 8 that go into 16.04. You can already do it. You, you would have seen blogs of people showing their their production phone um, with aspects of convergence. Obviously, there's a bunch of stuff we'd like to get. We'd like to get some of the you know traditional kind of legacy Linux applications, things like OpenOffice, um, uh, working really nicely in that convergence thing, so that you and I can can actually use it as our daily driver. Um, I'd like to have my laptop running Unity 8 and and be a snappy system rather than a than a sort of classic deb based system. Um, so those are the things we're trying to get right for 16.04. We know that you know that new world isn't going to be ready to be the default, so we won't make it the default. But we'll make it an option for people, and it'll be a fun option for for those of us who like to to kind of push the limits. Um, um, I hope that answers your question. All right. Um, Jan is asking, aside from conversions, what are some of the key differentiators between Ubuntu and phones and the competition for your average consumer? Um, I think our security story um, for Ubuntu on phones is really good. I think I'm, I'm proud of the fact that we picked Telegram, and now Telegram is becoming kind of the key messaging app for people who care about privacy. Um, I think our, our update story is you know world class. You, you you're going to have a, you know a much less fragmented ecosystem with Ubuntu than you do with other kind of open phone platforms. 
um, and uh, and I'm super proud of the design. Right, it, it it was very difficult when we hired some of the best designers in the world. They some of them said it was impossible to do a convergent experience. Right, and I look at what we've got, and I think it's really clean, really thoughtful, really beautiful, and and will scale nicely. So um, so I think those are all things to be proud of, to celebrate, and uh, and to invest in. All right. Nathan's question, uh, Nathan Haynes is asking, will Ubuntu Personal enable a, a desktop Ubuntu experience on a device like, like Raspberry Pi Model 2? Well, that's interesting. Um, um, y yes, I think it will. Um, but the it's much more interesting to actually have it on a phone, because then you get the experience of, of having it on a phone, right, of, of it being a phone. I think. Um, a Raspberry Pi to me is a is a small PC, so um, yes, it should work, but then it's not really convergence because you don't really have those other pieces. Um, I think the fun stuff for us in this cycle is obviously um, getting access to some of those traditional applications, those kind of legacy applications from the from the um, um, traditional X Windows Linux world, like OpenOffice, uh, the GIMP. Um, cool, you know, cool stuff like that. Let's show how that can come to the phone, come to the tablet. I think also we have a lot of work to do uh, in the tablet form factor, right? You've seen how the phone has really come together. It's a much cleaner, classier experience now than when we put out the 1.0. Uh, the the next step is obviously the tablet form factor with our side stage and, and the multitasking story. Um, it's kind of amazing to me that we put multitasking in the side stage and just just this week, I got an update from um, from Apple on an iOS device, and there's a side stage, right? So I think you, 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 you for, for many people, it's a real privilege to be part of a free software project that is right at the front, at the forefront. You know, not copying the proprietary guys five years later, but actually right there at the time that it's happening. So for those of you who like to kind of be part of the next thing, that's that's a great opportunity. All right, so I'm going to take a question that's uh, related to this. I think you've already answered part of it, but just Caracas is asking, aren't you scared Microsoft will still open to standard with uh, Continuum? No. Um, no. Um, think of how many ideas other people have had that make Ubuntu great. Right? Isn't that... It's obvious, right? And, and uh, we couldn't. It wouldn't. We, it wouldn't work if we thought that they might be upset that we, you know, used their ideas. Think of how many brilliant people contributed to Linux, contributed to all the various desktop environments, and how many of those ideas landed up in Unity. Uh, we've had our fair share of brilliant ideas, um, and uh, I, I think it's great for others to be following, right? I saw. I saw a, a, a Microsoft. You know, announcement about an LTS product, and that made me laugh a little bit. I thought that was kind of cool, right? That that we've had ideas about how software should be delivered to people, as well as the experience and so on, that that are spreading. To me, a revolution isn't about burning down the palace, right? Uh, and it isn't about killing the people in the palace. It's about getting everybody to think about the world in a new way. That's a real revolution. And it would be difficult for us to claim to have conducted a successful revolution, right, if all we ended up with was a smoking ruin of a palace, right? Um, what we really want to do is to be able to say, look, we were part of getting the whole software industry to think differently about software. Um, and to me, that's a classy revolution, and that's how I'd like us to be. Okay. Um, we've got about five minutes uh, left, so if you've got any um, last-minute questions, just prepare them, and uh, we'll try to answer as many as, as we can. Um, Mario Grip is asking, what is the Ubuntu to touch strategy to fix the user needs apps and apps need, need users problem? Ah, well, the first thing is, you know, let's be useful to the biggest biggest possible crowd of users, right? And for us right now, that is the Linux desktop audience, right? The developer desktop. We have a fantastic developer desktop. If you walk into the offices of most large-scale engineering operations, you see a lot of Ubuntu, right? We have a fantastic developer desktop. Let's let's take that converge, convergent story and bring it home, right? Let's make people want to use uh, a, a converged desktop on Ubuntu, right? Because that way they can, they can develop 
um, everywhere they can they can carry things around in a whole new way. So that's that's a key kind of goal for us. Um, the second thing is you have to be there at the point of disruption. And to be honest, we're kind of nine years late on the phone, right? Because the point of disruption was seven years ago. To be part of that, we would need it to have started two years before that. So I don't mind being nine years late because we're also right at the beginning of convergence, right? So we, 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 we missed the early phone, but we've built a convergence story that I think is first class, um, a leading convergence story. And then the last thing is to remember that personal computing is going to get disrupted again, right? Personal computing is going to get disrupted again. And so it's important for us to be there when that happens, and then we can be part of the next disruption. And who knows how that might play out. All right. Um, next question comes from Jan. Will we see a refreshed icon theme for 16.04 and Unity 7? Um, well, the, the, there's a great deal of work that's been done on icons that's showing up as part of the phone, part of the convergence story. Um, I think it's completely plausible to bring that to Unity 7. Uh, that's a great thing to discuss this week. All right. So next question from Ogra. Will we ship Alexi and Alex, uh, Alexi by default everywhere in 16.04? Yes, we will. So um, if you haven't played with Lexi, well, specifically Lex D, which is Lex, Lex C 2.0 includes Lex D. Um, it's amazing. It's incredible. It will change the way you develop because you can now super quickly just create a fresh container, which is a like a fresh space, and you can do all of your building in there, and it doesn't taint your your, your existing environment. So uh, it, it's really a, a, a complete transformation of the way you use a Linux machine. So yes, Lex D will be a standard part of Ubuntu. It'll be there on every machine. You can you can you can you know launch a container with a single command. Um, it's it's going to be awesome. All right, and so I think we'll get, we're going to take the last question so that we can start sessions on time. CLR is asking, uh, how long before, how long before we will see a functional desktop on Snappy with all the basic desktop apps? Ah, that's a great question for the for the um, desktop des desktop team. Now they've done some pretty amazing things. You've probably seen blogs and videos, right? They've got traditional X applications working in a Snappy world. Um, there's there's probably a bunch more stuff that we need to do, but with Snapcraft, it should be really easy for us to bring some of those some of those packages into that Snappy world. Um, it's a fun place to contribute. It's a fun place to be, and there's 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 a bunch of interesting hacking to be done. I would I really want my laptop to be a Snappy machine, right? It's a much more secure way to work. Um, I'm sure initially there'll be a ton of sharp edges, but you know. I, work my way around quite a few sharp edges in, in, in life. And I find that if you're willing to do that, you get a taste of the future much, you know, much before everybody else. On that note, David, thank you very much for leading us through the session. Um, it is going to be a great UOS. And uh, I wish everybody a, a fun, um, intense, and productive week. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Mark. So for everyone of you joining the sessions afterwards, just uh, straight, um, head up to uh, summit.ubuntu.com. We've got three exciting sessions coming up. Uh, we've got the community roundtable. Uh, we've got how to write an Ubuntu app with QML and a session on testing Snappy. So that's it for the intro. Uh, hope to see you on the sessions and have a fantastic week. Thank you, everyone, and bye-bye.